As I walked through the halls of a K-12 school designed specifically for students living with a visual impairment, I was met with the normal bustle of a high school. Students were excitedly yelling to their friends, hurriedly finishing last-minute assignments before the class bell went off, and planning what they would do as soon as they got out of school. But there were a few notable differences. Where were the kids rapidly typing on a test? Where were the kids crowded around a laptop competing to get the next highest score in a game? And most importantly, where were the kids testing out the latest Snapchat filter on their selfies? You know, as a teenager myself, the thought of living and operating without my phone is truly terrifying. So I'd like you to take a moment now and close your eyes. Imagine your favorite app, whether it's Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is. Can you use that app and enjoy it to the same capacity with your eyes closed? That is a reality for 285 million people worldwide who live with a severe visual impairment, of whom 39 million are completely blind. The phones and the technology that we've come to rely on are overwhelmingly geared towards people living without a visual or auditory impairment. So I'd like you to think about that for a second. The technology that we use is something that is not accessible to a huge amount of people. As we move through our world, we have, to be, uh, we have to be conscious of the things that people are able to use. So now, think of Snapchat, think of Facebook. What are things you could do to make them more accessible? And these are things that fall under Android's accessibility guidelines. So, um, the importance of this is that we are able to move forward in a world of information accessibility. In today's world, that growth is happening at an exponential pace. With the phones in your pocket, you can learn about any subject imaginable, from biophysics to what the Kardashians are doing. You can share images, watch videos, talk to people across the globe, play games. The opportunities are truly endless. But just 15 years ago, this spread of information was unthinkable. And yet we continue to make huge advancements every day. But what about the growth and the spread of accessible technology for those people living with disabilities? So let's take a little trip through history. In 1829, Braille was developed, followed 60 years later by a Braille writing machine. In 1921, the white cane was officially recognized, and a few years later, TV with picture and sound became mainstream. Now jump forward 70 years, and in 2003, the first mobile phone designed specifically for the blind came out and included things like Braille on the keys and larger font size. Personally, I think the greatest advancement in accessible technology came out just a couple years ago, in 2014, with the rise of voice controlled assistants. Thanks Siri, Alexa, and Cortana. But let's take a step back. In that same time frame, we've also developed robots that are masters of jeopardy, watches that you can make phone calls from, and self-driving cars. The progress when you weigh this against something like buttons on a key, it makes you question the efficacy of the movement of accessible technology. And that's not to say that those living with a visual impairment don't use technology. In fact, the opposite is true. But we must bring awareness to the fact that the spread and the growth of accessible technology compared to the technological advances of today are happening at a snail's pace. And because of this, we've inadvertently left out a huge portion of our community in the discussion and conversation about information accessibility. Now I say inadvertently because I honestly think most tech developers just forget about those living with a visual impairment when they develop new features or new apps. As a young developer myself, I was unaware about the need for accessible technology until just a few years ago. As part of an internship at Portland State University, I had the opportunity to work on the Unified English Braille Prep Project. And as part of that, I was tasked with designing a mobile game to help kids with visual impairments and their parents learn how to use Braille. And the first thing I thought was, how prevalent is Braille really? I've never seen it on a menu or signs or appliances. And moreover, it's only useful if you can get close enough to touch it. What about things like billboards or announcements? And those sleek, smooth cell phones in your pockets definitely don't have bumps on them. So where do we go from here? 
We continued to make these huge advancements, but we've forgotten a large part of our society. Certainly, we've come up with a better way, other than Braille, which was developed in 1829, for the visually impaired to access the world around them. So around this time, there was something huge that hit the tech world that gave me some inspiration. It was so amazing that it revolutionized the way that you and I interact with the world around us. It was Pokemon Go. So while it is just a game, it, was, it blew the field of augmented reality wide open. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the app, it essentially uses augmented reality, which is a way for users to view and interact with the real world around them, along with some computer-generated aspects. So a player would be guided to point their phone at the mailbox, where they would see a little Pokemon perched on top of it. So I had an idea. What if, instead of using this technology to catch a Charmander, we could use the same concepts instead to guide a visually impaired user to point their phone at a letter or a billboard, and have that information read aloud, or have the object identified? So from this, I built an app called My Vision. And My Vision is essentially allows visually impaired users to simply point their phone at a piece of text and have it read aloud in any major language. I'm currently working on including auditory and tactile cues in order to make it easier for the user to use. So essentially, this is how the app works. I can take any piece of text, just simply point the phone above it, and based on your camera speed, you'll be able to read it aloud. One. Pour pasta into three quarts saucepan percent S full of boiling water. Gently boil uncovered 12 minutes, stirring. Occasionally. Okay, so that's just like a short demo of how the app works. And, you know, this. <laughs> it is a little bit flashy, but this tech isn't anything revolutionary. It utilizes Android's text to speech capabilities, think like what Cortana uses and it uses open source character recognition libraries. But also keep in mind that I was a 14 year old who had just begun self-learning how to code, and I didn't have the resources and certainly not the knowledge to make anything revolutionary. But my vision is an app that follows Android's accessible guidelines. And shockingly, it was downloaded and used by people other than my parents. <laughs> it was also reviewed on a forum for visually impaired users, and while there are some changes to be made, for the most part, the app was successful. So if there was anything I learned from this experience, it's about how easy it is to get into coding, and even easier to make an app that is fun, useful, and truly accessible to everyone. So I urge you, when, whether you're a, a student who's just starting out, or a professional in the field, when you develop the next Candy Crush, or build a new tablet, consider those living with a visual impairment. Review the guidelines that Android and Apple set as to what constitutes an accessible app. They're truly as simple as including sound cues or just increasing the font size. Technology continues to revolutionize the way that we learn about the world around us, but for far too long, we've marginalized and forgotten a large part of our society. Developing accessible technology is about reconnecting a community with the world around them. It's about using science and innovation to improve someone's life. And most importantly, it's about giving the quality of life that we so easily take for granted. It's a tech developer's responsibility to represent the needs of society as a whole. And we, as members of the community, have the power to demand that every resource, every service, and every piece of technology that we use is truly accessible to everyone as we move forward in our digital world. Thank you.